In this movie we're going to look at Archicad, the virtual building concept for use with existing buildings and the use of renovation filters. To begin with we're going to look through the Archicad workspace. On the left hand side we've got the toolbox. This gives us access to all of the tools within Archicad, starting off with the selection tools at the top, the design tools, these are the 3D modeling tools such as walls, slabs, beams and columns and the documentation tools. The documentation tools are a mixture of traditional 2D drafting tools such as lines, hatching, text and annotations as well as drawing markers. Drawing markers such as the section marker, elevation marker and detail marker allow 2D drawings to be pulled away from the 3D model. In Archicad we're working on a single building model and the documentation is all derived from this central model. We'll talk more about that later. Across the top of the screen we've got the info box and the info box displays the current settings for the current tool. Whether that's the default settings of a tool that's selected in the toolbox or the selection settings for an element that's selected in the model. At the moment I have a wall selected at the rear of this property and we've got the settings across the top for that wall structure. Looking at the structure type, the link to the various stories, the geometry method, as well as IDs and tags. On the right hand side we have the navigator. The navigator is fundamental to working in Archicad and we've got the series of buttons across the top. In this movie we'll be working in the project map and the project map really is the model itself. Every time we create a new story or section or elevation it gets added to this list automatically and that helps navigate between those different parts of the model but we're looking at different slices of that model whether it's in a 3D view as on the screen at the moment or in it as a 2D drawing. So as we open up any of these particular parts of the model by double clicking on these you can see these drawings are generated from the model. This also includes things like schedules, so we have door lists and window lists in here. Again, this is all derived from that central model, but we're just taking different information and we're displaying it in different formats. So in this case, we'd be looking at a text format and we'd be looking at just the windows or doors rather than the elements that are on a particular story. We then have the view map where we can define different drawing styles. We'll be looking at this more in part two. The layout book where we can define different drawing sheets and also the publisher set where we can control the document exports. I also have on my screen a couple of additional palettes that are going to help during this presentation. First of all the renovation palette. Because we're working with an existing building it's important that we can define whether an element is an existing element, a new build element or demolition. And we have the favourites palette, which allows me to predefine certain element types which are going to be used throughout a project. As part of this project, there's going to be a few changes that are made to the structure of the building. First of all, the roof space is going to be converted into additional uh, living spaces. So there's going to be an additional bedroom in that, in that loft area. We're also going to extend the ground floor at the rear of the property and we're going to make a couple of changes to the windows within this project. Now if I select the different renovation filters in the renovation palette that will show us the different stages of this project based on the different statuses. Now every element in this project will be set up as an existing status, demolition status or new build status and that can be defined in this renovation palette. If I select this roof for example, we can see that it's currently set to be demolished. 
By selecting the relevant renovation filter from the list of available options in this renovation palette, we can look at this project at the different stages. So we're starting off looking at the existing building. That's showing the existing elements and the demolition elements. If we move to the demolition filter, we can see highlighted at the moment any elements that are going to be removed. In this case, we're removing certain elements within the roof story and within the ground floor. I'm then going to go to after demolition. We can see that a lot of the roof structure has been removed, as well as parts of the ground floor. We can look at the proposed. This actually shows us the new build in green and the demolition in red. Through to the proposed building. Here we can see the building at the end of the project. So we can see the new living space on the top story and the extended ground floor. We're also going to make a couple more changes to this building. What we're going to do is we're going to select a couple of the windows in here to be removed and we're going to replace these with some new bay windows. To do that, what I'm going to do is select these original windows and set their status to be demolished. So that I can see where I'm going to place the new windows, I'm going to change the renovation filter to after demolition and we can see the openings for these windows. To place the new windows, I'm going to select the window tool and then click where I'm going to place these. So I've selected the central anchor point and I can click to the centre of the opening. And same on the story below. I'll now select both of those windows and we'll select the new build status. They've disappeared from the current filter because we're looking at the after demolition filter. But if we go back through those filters again, we'll see how that's affected the model. Starting off with the existing building, we have the original two windows. Demolition. Again, we have those windows highlighted to be removed. After demolition, we have the empty openings. Proposed. We can see the new windows highlighted in green. And finally, the final model with those new windows in place. These statuses don't affect simply the 3D model, but they also affect any 2D drawings. We can apply them to the floor plans, sections, elevations, etc. So what we can do is we can go back to the rear elevation. We'll select the colour drawing here. And again, we can look at this building with the different filters. So we can look at the existing building, the demolition drawing. This time we have the filter set up with red for the demolition and yellow outlines. After demolition, proposed over existing, which shows the proposed and demolition elements, through to the final proposed 